to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, and those phone lines are open, 1-800-229-3000. But uh, I've got with me two very open, honest people, Dr. Sherry Keffer, Dr. Alice Benton. Hi, guys. Hey, it's great to be with you both today and all of those listening. We love being with you. And New Life was my first example of being that open with weakness, with patterns of sin, with struggle. I'd never heard an example like that before I found out about New Life. So thank you, Steve. Well, that's a really good thing to hear Mm -hmm. because uh, that's really, I think, where, of course, healing starts, right? Is when we finally say, I'm tired of the the secrecy and I'm ready to open up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk some f- to some folks who are ready to open up. Let's go to Gordon, Portland, Oregon, listening on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you. And yourselves? Yeah. What's going on? How can we help? Well, um, like I told you, Screener, um, I've been dealing with stuff my entire life um, with a porn addiction. And I'll just get right to it. You know, it, it I know that it started um, with being molested, six, seven, eight years old. Mm-hmm. And during that molestation time with this man, um, he also had me doing stuff with some young girls. Oh, okay. Man. Now, let, let's just Heart sum it up by right? saying, let's sum it all Gordon. up by saying this, that you had some very, very uh, complex and very, very horrific abuse done to you. Uh, and we, you know, we don't need to hear uh, the details. Uh, it's just, it's right. horrible already what you've said. So let me go to this question then. Uh, what has been done? What have you done uh, to get help with all of that? Um. Well, for the longest time, I didn't do anything, you know, because, I mean, also my situation. Yeah, but what, home, what what have you done? I love my mm-hmm. mom. Well, pray, you know, I mean, go to church and pray. I talk with my wife that I have now. Um, Fifteen years now we've been married, and she knew that I was looking at porn and that she was okay with it. Yeah, when we first got together. Okay, all right. I'm just trying to keep you focused here. I want to help you, so I'm keeping you focused here. You're essentially you're saying you've never gotten any professional help. You've prayed. You've done all the things. Um, What's the question for us? No professional help. What's the question for us? My, I guess my question is, is I'm not sure what I can do because because of everything that's happened besides the molestation stuff. I've gotten better at not going to the porn, you know, being able to resist it for the most part. You know, it's still some, and I'm still working on that. Okay. But now I'm at a point that I don't even enjoy sex anymore. Okay, so, so here's the question. I, we have a great real, sex real quick, life, here's the question. Anything, I can't if, stay with it. Got it. So you that that is absolutely a um, a symptom of a person with a porn problem. But my question is, you, why have you never thought about uh, going to every man's battle? I mean, if you're calling us, you listen to the program. Why haven't you ever thought about maybe doing that to get some help? Yeah, you know, I mean, I've been listening to you guys for a while, and I've been wanting to call. I just didn't know how to even start mm-hmm. the conversation yeah. with folks I don't even know, right? But I'm like, sure, right. you've done okay. great. You've done yeah. really great, like, Gordon. Look, I, here's the thing. Um, I mean, maybe you're you're new to what we do. But there are guys that are walking around free, totally free. They're not plagued by this, and they love their wives, and they're once again attracted to their wives. But pornography destroys the ability to perform with a woman. We'll be back after this. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? 
Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. All right, we are back and we're talking with Gordon. And Gordon has had a tough, tough time and done some things, spiritual things, but not really ever the kind of professional help that is out there that could really bring this you know all of this not just to an end with the pornography and stuff healing from the molestation and then wholeness in the marriage alice what do you think oh gordon i'm so proud of you and it is very brave of you to call us and to start to tell your story and that is exactly the next right step in combination with the prayer work that you've already been doing but i think you're realizing that just you and god on your own even though god is sufficient it's still not enough because god asks us to allow other human beings to come along the journey with us to get to know the depths the darkest corners of our stories and then to lead us out of that darkness other people that have the knowledge and the skills and the tools to do it so you've called the right place because we love helping with these kind of situations and i'm just horrified at yes. what you have been through and all the ongoing pain you've continued to carry throughout these years but you're doing the right thing by reaching out now. So I think the next few steps will definitely involve accepting our help with our every man's battle. If you can come to that, we even offer scholarships if finances are difficult, but we, ha we have books on this that give you guidelines as well of what to do. But information is not enough. So I want to emphasize that getting in relationship with other men who can love you and accept you through this will start, oh, will just get, bring you leaps and bounds on your journey. Now, now I'm also concerned because both you and other young children were victims of this person. Has justice been done? Has the report been made on the perpetrator that did this to you? This, I mean, I believe it was, but I, I, I mean, that was so long ago, I don't remember what happened. I, I seem to remember talking to detectives. But like I said, I was like six, seven years old, so. Gordon, do you know if the perpetrator is I'm free? 50 now. Do, do you know if the perpetrator I, I is? I have no clue. No, you don't I'm know. I'm like 50 years old now, you know, that dude probably did know, okay. you know? Okay. I mean. Well, uh, Gordon, as, as you. Know, I was six, seven years old. He was in his 40s probably, so. Okay. As you, um, as you move forward and hopefully we'll take some of these steps that we're suggesting, I want to uh, have you continue the spiritual warfare because I do not doubt that the enemy has gained footholds. And even through pornography, that leaves the door open for the enemy to continue to attack your marriage and break down relationship with your wife. And we have right. so many great Christian well, counselors. I'm worried about it. I'm in a tug of war with you. Yes. You know, I'm in yes. a tug of war. And, and and what I feel even more worse about, and and I'm I'm not gonna go into complete details just because the stuff is out there. But my wife and I we have a great sex life. You know, we, we it's hard for me to do anything anymore because I feel like I'm just shut down from it. You know, like I don't even enjoy it anymore. And it's not because of her. No, but you there's, know, there's help for that. Her. That's what we're trying to say. There was a, there's help there's for that. There's a time. There's a time that her and I together now okay i didn't force nothing nothing like that but we had gotten porn right and, and and we actually went and did porn 
Right. We have we have videos okay. out there. So here's what I'm we saying that you it, what I'm what I'm saying is all of the details it doesn't help. Those are things that you can share in a counseling session where it would be appropriate for somebody to help you deal with that. But that's a reenactment. That's mm-hmm. a reenactment, Gordon, for you to have videos that you've done with your wife that are out there. That's heartbreaking. And yeah. that's when it really, y- you, are, you are in serious trouble. You're in serious trouble because of the sexual violation that you've experienced and not getting help is causing you to do things that are actually shaming your wife and yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so right now, today, I don't want you to wait another day. You are not in recovery. You haven't started recovery. You're doing what's called white knuckling. Yeah. And you're trying, 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 and, and it's not helping. So today, I want you to look up in your area a 12-step essay group, a sex addiction group, and I want you to go to a meeting. That's really the, that's the answer it's, right there. It's, you got to go. You got to start there. And um, like you said, Steve, he's got to get into a therapist coming to our weekend. And I want to send his, uh, his wife my book, Intimate Deception, yeah. because she's in denial, too. I mean, both mm-hmm. of y'all have been in denial over the extent of harm that yeah. porn has done to your home. So I don't know what you want to send to him um, you know whether it's worthy of her trust. Well, might, that we'll might send every man's battle. To every start. man's battle. That would be and a great then, one. And then we'll take it from there. Yeah, but it's heartbreaking to see how how our we lose our way in the midst of all this, and yeah. it gets dark and black, and and what seems right is actually wrong. Yeah. So we want to help, and uh, we'll send you the book. We have a workshop for folks. There's scholarship available. I just, I hope that you hear that, you know, this whole ministry was started 31 years ago to help with the most difficult situations. And this, it really is a shame-free zone when you come and let us help you. And you think, oh, I don't want to talk about this. It, it is. It, it can be embarrassing. But that's, I mean, in a safe place, it really it can be the beginning of healing that you simply never dreamed uh, was possible and that's what we want to do so call us 1-800-NEW-LIFE let us help you let's go to Lizzie San Francisco California hi Lizzie how are you today hi how could we help I'm all right um, my two big concerns are my uh, almost 17 year old granddaughter and her mother who mm-hmm. are I believe for sure the granddaughter is clinically depressed um they, uh, my belief, and I, I mean, I know uh, all the kids are five children. All the children <clears throat> have been molested in some form, abused in many forms, mm. uh, religiously, all kinds of ways. I was just talking to her sister yesterday. I was trying to read through this comic uh, Bible book, and she said, I already read that. And I said, well, you, you read this whole book? She said, my dad would make us sit there and, and uh, read it, or he was going to whatever I don't know was forget what she said at that point <clears throat> anyway my granddaughter is self-medicating on marijuana and alcohol from time to time I've had her in the ER twice she's been in the psych hospital uh, last December for five days they gave her some sort of medication I think it was called C- C- I can't remember the name. it doesn't matter the so C. but how anyway, what's the question um, for us then but the but the question well and then right now the father up and left two months ago with a woman he met uh, at some seminar he went to mm-hmm. uh, left and moved to San Monica from this area. Okay. He has now got a lawyer and is fighting joint custody for his children, um, and they don't need to be with him. He's dangerous. Okay. I believe How can we help you, though? In every way. What is your What's your question How for us? How can I help that? How can I help my daughter? My there is no money access to money right now because she is working a part time uh, little job because he wanted her to be home with the kids and okay. now he's and so he hasn't really given her anything. He's got a lawyer. And you're wanting to help lawyer. her. How can we help? How can I help my daughter? Of course. Help herself, who I believe is depressed. 
So okay. because she sleeps a lot. Right. Okay. So your daughter's and depressed, her, but you've said the kids have also been molested by who? By the father. Okay. I mean that is something I. And they're I minors, okay, right? I, I they're, always. They're under the age of eighteen. Yeah, they're all under. Mm. Yeah, I had reported him when there were three children. Mm. Uh huh. Reported him, and they, nothing happened. They tried talking to the kids. They were babies. You know, right. Little, little tiny kids. Well, you know and what I'm going to help you do today. There. You know what I'm going to help you do today, Lizzie. I'm going to help you make another call. Yeah. I'm going to help you make another call. Well, he's been reported again since then, though. Okay, by because who? Because what happened was... By who? There were, by uh, by a, a place he went to in Colorado to get help, because what happened was my granddaughter, a year or so ago, when they're still in the home, found a camera in the bathroom that her and her little girlfriend who had spending the weekend used, and she brought it out, and she said, what is this? And she's screaming, yelling. And he wasn't admitting to it at first and later he did admit to it mm. she threw it outside he eventually got it and i believe she feels he took it in the bathroom for a long time and deleted everything but mm. he was his um my daughter did have him go to she didn't know what to do so she told me he needed to get out and go get so he said he went you know he went to this place in colorado to get help with this and they reported him mm -hmm. and that went nowhere too. Okay. Well, um, guess what I'm going to do? We're going to make a third third call today. We're going to make a third call. Third time's a charm. I'm going to I'm going to stay on the phone after we're done because you're exactly right. These children cannot be with him. And so your call, my call today to child protective services, we're going to appeal because things have changed. Right? He's he's leaving with some other woman. And he wants joint custody. These, these these kids are going to be um, harmed when the mom isn't there. Right. They were harmed when she was there. And so right. um, I so love the so fact right that you're calling. Call yeah, yeah, I love that you're calling. I love that you haven't get up. Because sometimes people get up, give up if Child Protective Services do, doesn't do anything. Everybody just puts their hands up in the air. Well, they tried. I mean, somehow. I, I mean, detectives were involved. Uh, they were involved. Everybody believes, but for some reason, I don't know what happened. Oh, they did speak to the kids for five hours, I believe, uh, one day, and because the kids didn't, I don't know if they didn't know what to say. That was a lot of times almost, they they don't you know, know that it's safe to tell. To yeah, and two years later, they're two years older, and then when there is another investigation, then something actually does happen. That's why we never want to give up. Uh -huh, you're on right, keeping Steve. kids safe. I was talking to someone okay, recently. Well, I listen yeah. to this. I was talking to somebody recently who was a teenager that was being abused and mm -hmm. she said she was an older teen and she said mm -hmm. you know what I got to a point that I was tired of it all and I decided to tell and at that point everything changed and so as a as a grandma you might be able to lovingly encourage your grandkids to just be honest they're not in trouble for telling right, right. they're not and and when they have the reassurance that they're going to be safe yeah and they're told that, and they realize nothing has ever happened in the past, and if he's threatened you, then he, we're not going to let that be a um, danger. Well, the problem know, with a the danger. lady in the left... Okay, well, but it doesn't matter. We're going to hold you on here, and, and we're going to try to get you some help off the air. So hold on. We're going to take care of this, and, and we really want to help you. So hold on, and we'll get right to that. Now, let's go to Mary from Washington, D.C., Listens on W A V A. Hi, Mary. How are you? Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. Certainly. <coughs> How can I, we uh, help today? I'm a Christian woman. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sure can. Thank you. Uh, I'm a Christian lady. I've been married for 20 years. Uh -huh. um, me and my husband dated for for a while, and then we had premarital sex, got married. We have uh, two children, and um, um, but after we got married and uh, children, there is no physical intimacy mm -hmm. between us. Um, my husband and I, I started, I mean, children were young, so they were sleeping with me like that years passed by. And then he started sleeping on his own. So 
I thought it was maybe he's not interested. I'm not interested. We tried a couple of times in the middle, but nothing happened. So, um, and um, and between all these years, I've been seeing him talking with his ex girlfriends and um, all the phone messages, like tapping onto other women and all these. And he goes late night. Um, so I, you know, I found him. I called called him called. Uh, asked him about this he brushed it away we would argue for two days and then you know for me i would see it's not important to fight with him because i'm not mm-hmm. going to lose yeah. this marriage for whatever and i know that's what satan wants uh, at the end of it so right. um, i don't want you to hold on we're going to go to a break and then we're going to help you after this I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met, connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight, hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas, Texas, July 19th to the 21st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. (laughs) Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Right now we're um, we're talking with Mary, and, and she's told us that there's this is another marriage, no uh, sex here after all these years, and she's saying, but I'm, I've done certain things or haven't done certain things because I know Satan... Uh, wants the marriage uh, to end in uh, divorce and she doesn't want it to end in divorce so what what is the question for us then how could we um, help you today? so the actual thing was he um i don't know if he married her or but i've seen him pictures with another woman uh he went on a trip for two whole weeks uh so they went uh like three times this year um so i so that was a big uh, red alert for me to quit the marriage. So God showed me all this. I heard him talk to her like a wife and all that. Um, so I'm still in here um, arguing with him. The arguments have gone bad. So um, I'm lonely. He doesn't want to talk. He he says just don't talk and be quiet. And then so there is no communication. Um, okay. So so what's the question I'm just, uh, for us? Man. What what is the question? Kids, should I stay in the marriage or should I leave? I, I don't know what to do. Uh, well, what do you think? Getting, what do you think God would say in this situation about your marriage? Um, I don't know. That's why I'm calling. Okay. So we we know this that Jesus was very specific about when it was okay to divorce 
And you know what that is, right? Because you were you were yeah, saying you, that. What's that? Adultery. Yeah. So while Satan wants divorce, you're saying I'm not going to do that. But I, I think Satan also wants you to be victimized by a man who is abusive to you. Wouldn't you think that would be a great agenda for Satan to have? And we don't want that. Yeah, at right? the end of the day, I'm, my kids are suffering, so I want them to have a family. Okay, you are know, you talking to anybody? Is anybody um, is anybody helping you with this horrible situation? So initially, I took him to a pastor. He came, but then he's he says, "I want my wife. I want my children. This is something I will leave." And mm -hmm. then I think I'm trying to see that he he says one thing to me, but he's actually continuing with. Her. Um. So yeah. and then if okay. I say something, he m makes a mockery of it. Okay. Well, Alice, can you get us started here? I, I want to give her some hope and some very specific direction because this is a horrible, horrible situation. Mary, Mary, Ma Mary, Mary, I'm, I'm going to, Mary, Mary, would you stop for just a moment? Because yeah. I, oh, I, I want to protect you and I feel so angry for you in a protective way. Um, because God has a lot to say about your marriages and about what we should do when evil is in our home and it's continuing. Oh, and God wants so much more for you and for your husband than this. So I think specifically about Proverbs 10.10 10 and 19.19 because it talks about when we turn a blind eye to evil, when we tolerate it, or when we rescue an angry man from the consequences of his behavior, we are enabling evil to continue. And I know you're trying to talk to your husband. You're not just giving up on this. But there, there is, there's more, you have more options than I think you realize before having to consider a divorce. You get to decide what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate. You can't force your husband to do anything, but you can change some of your behavior to have the best chance of influencing him to do things differently. So it means taking some protective steps and limiting your exposure to what he's doing to you, to the marriage, which will absolutely affect the kids as well. That toxicity flows down from one generation to the next, but you have the power to do something about it so whether it's seeking out counseling letting us set you up with a counselor from our network even starting to consider a, a, a legal separation if need be to protect your finances and to show your husband that you care so much about this marriage that you will not turn a blind eye anymore to his behavior those kind of steps have the best power and possibility of protecting you your children and influencing your husband been to make some different decisions yeah and, and nothing okay. will be different until action is taken and although it it may not feel like you want to take any action it really it it's probably the best hope you have of not getting a divorce is to actually take some action so um, we want to you know, it, it's time that you let something happen that hasn't happened before. Sherry, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, I wrote a chapter in my book, Mary, called No is a Complete Sentence. And I've just been really aware and listening to you that there have not been boundaries mm -hmm. in your marriage, that him sexually acting out has been painful, hurtful, and frustrating to you. But you have given up uh, at points along the way and resigned to try to live mm -hmm. with it and I, I just yeah, because I was also not interested so I'm also taking the blame for it I to know outside. yeah we do take the blame but you've not done anything wrong you, he is the one that's betraying you and so when we get our truth on when we get our head straight and we start to draw some lines in the sand things change mm -hmm. for the better. So we're going to send you my book, Intimate Deception, Healing the Wounds of Sexual Betrayal, and stay connected with us. We want to help you. We'll be back after this. 
My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change. Yeah, that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today, living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back, and um, let's, just, let's just finish here with Mary. What, what's the final thing you want to say here? I think just, you know, I, I loved hearing, Steve, how you woke her up to the truth, right? Do you know what God says? No. And then you said, well, do you know what Jesus says about why we, and, and she said, no, it's adultery, but we stay in denial. We don't want to mm-hmm. look at that because if I open my eyes to what's happening, then I'm going to have to make some changes. And I think that's where people get the most harm is when they're not looking. And so, you know, her husband's having her stay as a caretaker of the kids, but they're dying on the inside. So I, um, can you tell people what you just said offline about the best? Can you just say what you said, Steve? Because it was profound. Well, uh, she, you know, Mary, uh, and just talking to you and everybody else, you, you did the best that you could. You did the best you could with what you knew to do. There's no shame in any of us doing the best that we can. What we are here to do is to improve on the best that you can. So whatever you did, we, we want everybody, no matter what you've done, step it up a notch, and, and we want to make the best better. And so for us, it is saying to you, you've got to get some help. You've got to get support for yourself. Not only that, you, you're going to have to take some action. And oftentimes when we move with strength, the person responds in a totally different way. And so you're, you're going to challenge him to step up and, and be a man here. And you're not going to roll over and let him think that he can just do anything that he wants to do to you. So hold on. Uh, and we're going to send you this book. It's part of the best books ever uh, published by any of our hosts here, this book, Boundaries. It's just going to help you see things in a different way because the reality is, yes, God hates divorce, and he also hates watching a man uh, totally run over a woman and her think, I'm doing uh, what I need to do. We want you to change that. So hold on. I'm going to get you some help here. Larry's in the studio. Larry, talk to us. Hey, and, and how can people help others get help so that more people go from, I did the best I can, to, hey, here's something even better that I can do? Well, there's two ways people can do that. They can make a gift. They can send us a check. They can call the 800 number and give over the phone. 
and they can give five dollars, ten dollars, a thousand or more, whatever gift they can mm -hmm. give. Yeah. It's deeply appreciated. The other way that we're kind of on a campaign with of late is join Club New Life. When you join Club New Life, we'll send you an eight book set. Um, it's thirty dollars a month or more. It's automatic giving, and you get these eight books: Healing is a Choice, Changes that Heal, Boundaries, How We Love, Forgiving What You'll Never Forget, Every Man's Battle, Intimate Deception, and Secrets Women Keep. That's the best of the best of our radio hosts who are the authors of those books. And we have benefits like our um, our, our video library. And you know, somebody told me today, don't forget the video library, you can access that on our app. And you don't have to watch it, you can listen to it. You know, put it on your app, maybe the video is going, but you don't have to watch it, you can just listen. If you're a member of Club Nula. Exactly. Yeah. And, but here's, here's why we want you to give. This somebody, I read this a uh, week or so ago, I think, and it's worth repeating. This gentleman says, we joined Club New Life because of something Steve said on the radio. He said, not all of us have the opportunity to help like New Life does, but our support might be part of saving someone's life. It might help someone in a dire place, save a marriage, etc." cetera. We, he, then he goes on to say, we serve in a marriage mentoring ministry but how many will we reach? On the other hand, how many will you reach through your extensive audience and platform? So he respects and we respect all that he does. You know, he's meeting, mm -hmm. he's helping each starfish one at a time. That's right. Well, and you just think about our calls today. Lizzie, they're, they're the grandma, there's kids being yeah. abused and molested, right? right? I mean, she called in here and we're gonna make a call with her today. And, you know, think about Mary. She's been living in this marriage with a revolving door. And today was the day that she called us. And as Steve said, to help make her best better and 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 how many else are there like them there's out so there? many yeah there's so many i know the call board right now is lit up yeah. so there's lots of needs but supporting us helps keep us on the air so that we can through you help change these mm. lives and it, it helps that's us right. stop evil in its tracks that's the battle that we're fighting for the that's souls right. of our listeners and our callers so if you'd yeah. be willing to support a ministry that believes all that like we do um Please join us. Call us at 800 New Life. You can go online and join Club New Life. It's, and if you are already a member, $10 increase in your monthly giving will get you that set of books. So Happy to do it, too. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Larry. Really want to help folks. Can't do it without you. Call us 1 800 New Life. All right. Let's go to, um, how about we go to Kim, New York, New York? Hi, Kim. Welcome to New Life. Hi, I have a question in relation to my 28-year-old daughter is having a destination wedding in Spain mm -hmm. and mostly just family and her closest friends, mm -hmm. um, but there's a limited number of people that are going yeah. and she put up all the bridal people with her but said basically like you'll have to fend for yourself to the parents. Um, and so my dilemma has been that I live with a, an active alcoholic who's also a raging, emotionally abusive person, especially mm -hmm. when he drinks. Yeah. Um, I've been in counseling, you know, family counseling with him for five years, and I ended up going to counseling for myself individually also more than once. And last time I went, which is about a year and a half ago, um, I was told, you know, that, like, given permission to not cross his path, you know, he's basically being told it's, if, if just crossing his path in the house flies him into a rage and he begins, can you just um, tell you know, me, cornering. Can, can you tell me why, um, why he hasn't gotten treatment? He does not believe he has a problem. He thinks that the alcohol is helping him. He's been drinking since he's like uh, 12, 14, and he's 67 now. And there's so a, I, I there's know a family therapist that's saying it's okay for you to drink and I'm going to do therapy with you while you're drinking? Yeah, we had a therapist who still saw us 
I think it was oh, for so the sake you, of my you, son. You're not going mm-hmm. now. You're not going now. No. Okay. No, I'm not you, going now. Now I'm going to Alamon regularly. You're going to Alamon. And um, I. And yeah. Is that, and I have is that giving you any new and, insight or different thoughts about what to do? Just to take care of myself and and you know let the disease progress and it is progressing. Kim, but, Kim, you know, my Kim, 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 I'm going to interrupt you. You're calling about about the wedding, which is of course of concern. But I'm worried mm-hmm. about you on a day to day basis with this man. Really raging, you say? Raging. Well, yeah, I, I am too, and and so I've tried to talk with my daughter and say, listen, you know, you left the house twelve years ago, and as you've been gone, the disease has continued to progress. So, so Kim, what keeps and you what keeps you in the house with this man, with with how dangerous he is to you, and if your son is still there, anybody else that's in the home? You know what, Kim? Well, I, I'm, I'm. I'm believing that God is going to deal with him one of these days. Oh, okay. Come on. I, I come on. Now. now look. Wait a second. Wait so let me second. let me share oh. with you something. You don't believe you have a problem either. You are a victim. You're in a victim position, and you just blamed and guilted your daughter because you are mad that you're there with him. She left. She got out. And you're angry that she left you with him. But I want you to see right now, my dear, you're choosing to stay with an abusive man. The disease has progressed to an abusive level. I tell you what I would do Mm -hmm. if I was her. I would have a destination wedding, lowering the chance that you and him would show up. And I'd make room for everybody, my bridal party, and then I'd say to you, well, if you're going to come, you have to fend for yourself. That's what I'd do if I was her. Does that make sense, what's happening here? She doesn't want you there. She doesn't want him there. And and Kim, what we're... I don't blame her for that. What we're saying is harsh, but we're saying this out of love because we want you to see some truth and some options that, that there, there are some freedom, there are different steps that you can take for a better life for you, your daughter, your son, and even the possibility of better for your husband because doing more of the same is going to lead to more of the same. But she doesn't believe you, Alice. She doesn't believe you because no. you believe you're going to save him and God's going to save him and you're dying in the midst of waiting. We're going to try to help you right after this. Last year after every man's battle, I was so moved by the transformation that I saw, not only in myself, but in the guys in our small group and the other people that were there and the stories that I heard that I decided to go ahead and join Club New Life as a contributor to that. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Because we're doing God's work here, you're restoring marriages, you're giving people hope. It's just been such a blessing to me, and I just wanted to encourage you all. When you see something good that God's doing, just jump on that and help support that. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433. Give your support to them if you can, and and just help them do what God's doing here in the the world. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. I came into this thinking that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop is coming to Washington, D.C. June 28th to the 30th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. 
Here at this workshop, we had our first ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. All right, we're back. And Kim, we, we feel for you. We, we feel like you're using God, daughter, all these kinds of things as an excuse not to do what needs to be done. And if you're going to Al-Anon, that is great. But many times an Al-Anon meeting would say to you, hey, you're with a raging alcoholic. Yes, you need to do your work. You need to take care of yourself, which means you might need to ask him to leave for you to be safe or you have to leave to be safe. Sadly, that many times is the reality that that we're dealing with. Any thoughts here, uh, Sherry? Start I, with you. I would just, I completely agree with you, and I think sometimes we don't hear that in the meetings. Uh, uh, Leslie Vernick wrote a book called The Emotionally Destructive Marriage, and when there's clear abuse, Steve, someone isn't repentant, they're not turning around, then you then are submitting yourself to abuse, and and you need to get out. And so I'd love to send her that book, and we care about yeah, you. I'm we'll so go. glad you said that, Alice, because we're fighting for your heart. We want to call yes. you into safety. You're not safe right, right now. And, right. and there are times God asks us to wait when we see evidence of change taking place. But when sure. we don't and we're being abused, then I believe God calls us to battle. There is a holy war that needs to be fought for yes. the safety of this family and for this husband's soul. Right. We're on his side, and we're on your side nobody's side gets better if we just continue to do the same things. All right, so Take Your Life Back is coming your way. I, If you'll hold on, we'll get it to you. I think it's going to help you. Um, I really believe it could be the beginning of a whole new life for you. All right, let's go to Mackie, Seattle, Washington, our final caller here. Really glad you called. How could we help? What's going on with you today? Hi, you guys. Uh, thanks Hi. for taking my call. And sure. I know that you're each... Every single one of you are huge heroes of mine as of 10 years ago. Um, I recently got married on Christmas Eve, um, and uh, I just found out last night um, that my wife cheated on me with two different coworkers, on, oh. uh, two different business trips in Texas. Oh, man. Um, the first time I'm happened so about sorry. six weeks after our marriage, and the second time was about three weeks ago. Oh, God. And so, um, you know, I'm plugging in immediately uh, I got my counselor meeting tomorrow at nine I got my divorce mm-hmm. care recovery book I got my you know ch- ch- changes that heal um, note you know just kind of trying to get through this um, and um, what's her so, what's her I response mean, have, to you knowing what's what's the response here from her um, what she's saying she, to you she has admitted it uh-huh. she's admitted it um, she's you know I asked that some of her reasons why or I'm not good enough, I'm not perfect enough. Um, I know you've had an emotional affair with someone else. Um, the passion's not the same since we've met. After we got married, you were hiding me. Uh, you forgot to wear your wedding ring a couple times in January, and, you know, it was a, kind of a multitude of those things. And mm-hmm. For me, okay. you know, that, that it happened twice, um, yeah. my, one of my concerns is obviously, is, this, is she a serial cheater? Meaning she also admitted in her first marriage that, um, after her firstborn, she did kiss another guy um, before her second one too. But okay, my so what? Question what what's the question for us? On my heart, yeah. What's the question? My question is: um, throughout the years, I've listened to this the show, and you know, now recently become a donor. Um, is it right for me to inform these the spouses of the husbands of her co- coworkers that they have committed infidelity with my wife because? Like I think Jill just recently said and stated, you know, am I am I helping stop evil in its tracks? Because mm-hmm. ten years ago, I think I, was I think I think it's right. I think it's right for you uh, to interact with them and tell them that you expect them to never talk to your wife again. Okay. <clears throat> and never to touch your wife again. And, and you're that, talking about the spouses to let their wives know? 
but, yeah. but the one yeah. that the ones Fuckers. that have been with your wife, you, they need you need to become a person to them. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm trying to not have flimsy boundaries and figure a way to you know create some clear distinctions and healthy limits and you know I would not be doing this or informing this out of spite or relational purgatory. You know, my goal is to do what's right by what I think biblically I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And and yeah. Mackie, I'd add one suggestion because I agree with Steve. But I'd also have you let yeah. your wife know first. I want us, okay. the two of us, to have a conversation with both the people that you cheated with, letting them know in front of me that the relationship is over and that I know about it, if there's any hope of reconciliation or any desire for that on your wife's part, and to let her know if yeah. you don't tell the spouses I'm going to, but it gives her the opportunity that she may completely reject, but it gives her the chance yeah. to start restoring what she has done wrong and the harm that she's done to you and to their marriages. And mm -hmm. then you go forward if she won't do it. Yeah, that makes that's Thank you for clarifying that. That's what yeah, I remember I you guys just, saying from multiple callers throughout the years. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I, it, I will do it's, it. I think it's more important that you try to help her see that she's brought a problem into the marriage that was there before and that if she's ever going to deal with her life you're the guy to do it with and I would be just like you I would be afraid this is just the beginning so the question is is it going to be the beginning and if it is just the beginning because she's not going to come to a place of getting help she doesn't have to feel horrible right now she has to be willing to go get right, help correct. with you and if she's willing to get help then you've got great hope but if if she's not willing then what is the hope right and and the, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior yeah, unless right. there's an intervention yeah right oh boy yeah, okay. That's painful. I, and I, I want your heart to get some healing, Mackie, because mm -hmm. whether this marriage is able to be healed or not, this event can create a whole series of mishaps for you relationally, right? As you begin to, yes. to struggle with trusting other women, whether it's your wife or somebody else. So I want to mm. make sure you heal and you heal well. And I, for that reason, I want to send you my book, Intimate Deception, Healing the Wounds of Sexual Betrayal, because I want you to heal and have a roadmap for this path through it. Absolutely. All right, so this weekend, June the 7th, people are going to change. People that have been unfaithful, they'll never do it again because they're going to come to every man's battle. If you're struggling, if you've caused pain for others, why not in June the 7th, Cincinnati, Midwest, easy to fly into. Come join us and get the help you need. June the 28th, intimacy in marriage intensive. I don't care what it is you've dealt with. We can help you with it in your marriage. June the 28th. And then restore July the 19th. And we're going to do finding freedom again September 20th. And then 12 Steps to Happier is our Life Recovery Conference, October the 5th. But look, there are two things coming up that could change everything for you in June. One, every man's battle. The other, intimacy in marriage. Would you call us? Let us help you. It's what we've been here for. We want your better to become the best. We want your best to become better than it is. Oh, my goodness. Please let us help you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And if you can help us, call us. It's that same number. We'll send you eight books just by joining Club New Life for $30 a month. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Alice. Thanks to all of you who listen and watch and support. We are so grateful to you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.